Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I I guess I live about half time on this little wooden monk motor cruiser here in Genoa Bay, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All the while fixing it up as well uh, for gosh knows what. Um, but in the meantime, I'm having an awful lot of fun about, with it. Anyway, if that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Well, how about that, reusing an old intro? <laughs> At the time of editing this, I am sick in bed with actually my very first bout of COVID. Yes, indeed. Um, and it's hit me pretty hard. So anyway, I just thought I would use my cheery face in this scene to let you know that I did manage to get up to Genoa this week and uh, finish up uh, the bulk of the work in the wheelhouse. And, uh, well, I'll stop talking and you can just watch it. And welcome back to MV Poem. Gosh, it seems like an eternity since I was here last and it was only a few days. Um, just arrived back and I must say I'm just still so incredibly thrilled with the color and the depth of this um, of this gel stain. It worked out really well. I will refinish uh, the doors and the front windows and the entire interior in this uh, product for sure. Okay, I was hoping to get going on the dinette seating area here mostly because I'd really like to use it as a bed but uh, I wasn't able to get the wood I need for that. However, there is lots to do. I still haven't done the painting up here or down below. I have to create some sort of um, trim to go over the stringer here. And of course, there's the entire aft bulkhead of the wheelhouse, which is going to need tidying up. Uh, so that's going to be this week's project. The nice thing about that is by the time Friday rolls around, this will be a completed space. Just waiting for furniture. Let's get to work. Okay, the first thing I want to do is seal in these knots uh, with some stain and uh, because this pine will bleed through if I'm not careful. It may not bleed through the really, really good uh, paint I'm using, but I don't want to take a risk. So I'm going to use uh, bin two from Zinzer. Now I have used hundreds and hundreds of gallons of the original bin from Zinzer uh, because it was basically the mainstay of preventing exactly this sort of nightmare while I was building custom homes. Um, however, it is um, ammonia based and frankly I did not want to work in here after having fired up a whole bunch of ammonia. So this apparently is a little more friendly and hopefully it is at least moderately adequate. Let's see what we got here. For those of you worried I'm not using a drop cloth, I have three coats of um, polyurethane already on here. I'm going to be sanding it. So um, if I get a drop on here that I don't clean up perfectly, fear not. This is going to get a scuff coat of sanding just in the top coat of the polyurethane. Anyway, enough. Enough about that. All right. Well, this is this is pretty straightforward. No, 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 you know. Just... All right then, well with all the knots sealed, we can start to move on to what we're gonna to do to cover up this stringer. And this is pretty well traditionally done with a little piece of wood on top, a little piece of wood on the bottom, and one across the face of it that overhangs those two. Fairly straightforward. Um, a couple of problems. Um, I'm gonna do all that with plywood. Uh, because again, I'm having to use very economical materials, but by the time I get some of this fantastic gel stain on here, it's going to look really awesome. The other thing I need to do is you may be able to notice that the original bolts are actually carriage bolts here. These are the uh, lag bolts that I added recently, but the carriage bolts exceed by more than they need to. There's at least a quarter to three eighths of the thread sticking out. So I'm going to cut those off um, before I get started with anything. And even still, I'm going to have a quarter inch um, that I have to fill with some little filler blocks, but that's pretty straightforward. Okay, let's get on with that. Okay, let's get going and cutting off these carry bolts. Now, I do not want a bunch of grindings uh, in the bilge of my boat. I do not want any ferrous material down there. So my favorite way of catching um, metal grindings is with a really wet paper towel. I find it does an awesome job and it doesn't bounce around and you get to keep it all. Let's throw these on, shall we? All right, easy peasy. And what you don't keep, you can pretty much wipe up afterwards. Okay. Ooh, that is quite a significant pile of grinding filings. Okay. And we'll wake up, wipe up what's left here.
Okay, so in theory, this is the fun part. They do indeed bend on that arc. Oh, that makes me happy. Uh, all right, so this is uh, ridiculously straightforward. Um, I'm gonna tuck that up right against there. No scribe, because I'm gonna make a trim piece down here at the end eventually. So we'll just work our way out from the center one. And uh, that's nice and flush. We'll make sure that one holds nicely. There we go. <laughs> and now the bottom. Okay, time to put the final one on, but before I do, I'm just gonna make some little marks so I can remember where uh, to nail it. Now, I couldn't really tell if there was going to be any curve to this up and down, so that's why I left a little uh, shoulder room above and below, but it's actually incredibly straight. Even at the end here, wow, it doesn't need the slightest bevel down there. That's amazing. Um, wow, this turned out really good. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it up just a hair all the way along. Oh. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's put a couple of pins in here. Okay, we all know this is plywood, but it's tidy, and by the time I get some of my favorite gel stain on here, it's going to look awesome. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And well, good morning. Well, last night I got a bit frustrated. I actually started to do some painting in the overheads here, but I got about that far working with the brush and realized that what was I thinking? This is not something that you're going to brush. So I went to town and got uh, some rollers. So I'm going to roll it on and roll and tip. And anyway, we'll see how that will work. This is still going to be a massive amount of work uh, in my frustration. I did carry on and at least paint the inside, or I mean the, the, the ceiling that I put in. And I'm really pleased with that. It's the kind of thing that I could fuss with that and do some filling here and there. I am going to put some trim around the edges and and as it's all hidden, I'm very happy with the way that's going to go. So I just have to buckle down and do this because if I don't do it, I really, in other words, if I don't do it now, uh, I really can't do anything else in here because I don't want dripping onto all the lovely stuff I'm about to build. Let's get on with it. Okay, then let's see how this goes. Just lay it on. Actually, <laughs> I can actually fill the V grooves with the roller. Oh, I thought I was going to need the brush for that. Uh, this may work out just dandy. Wow. Okay. This is going great. Still a lot of work, but at least it's manageable. Well, there's a few things that I am, but there's one or two things I am absolutely not. And one of those is a painter. Um, so I'm very, very grateful for uh, Petit Easy Poxy for its lovely um, features of just flowing out ever so nicely. I'd have to say that this turned out uh, really quite well considering the relatively hack job I did of installing it. Um, I am so burned out about looking up, looking for imperfections. I imagine over the next little while, I'll just touch it up here and there with a paintbrush, but generally I'm very, very, very pleased. Main thing is now I can get going with the fun stuff. Oh my God, there's so much paint in my hair. Anyway, okay. So with this looked after, it's time to start looking after what we're gonna do here. And I've been spending quite a bit of time planning the basic, how everything's gonna relate here. 
Um, if you saw the 3D uh, visualization of what the boat's going to look like or might look like, uh, there I'm replacing the three cabinets that were here. One, two, three. Uh, I think probably only the center one will have a glass door. Anyway, I'm not quite sure about that. And I'm just designing how they're going to relate to the door opening and how the trim is all going to work here. It's quite a lot of little angles and stuff uh, that I'm playing with. But I can tell you a few things for sure. Um, inside the cabinets here, chunks of hair in my hand here, um, the bulkhead here is just too messed up to be able to really fix at least any time soon. Um, I'd love to tidy that up and put a bunch of Dutchman in here so that from the outside the, that bulkhead could be bright again someday, in other words natural wood. But this side isn't bad but between this side and the far side it's so chopped up I don't think that's gonna happen in the next little while anyway so I am actually going to put a little piece of sapelli ply in the back of this cabinet to tidy this up um, as well as I build these I also have to deal with this and of course I'd love to do something really excellent with that but it's probably gonna get a patch uh, of course, it'll be a perfectly adequate patch and it won't leak, but it's not rebuilding it as new. Um, if you saw the visualization, there's going to be a bead here, a little panel and possibly a shelf as it all turns into a band across here. And my, anyway, I think I'm probably talking enough uh, too much and not doing enough showing. So let's just get to it. But before we can do any of that, I just have to share with you uh, something about what it's like to be me. This archway, which is so cool, uh, the way it's cut, um, it actually matches on this side the shape of the overhead beam and then they just mirrored it over on the other side. I, it's one of the details on this boat I love so much. Well if you see on this side it ends about a quarter of an inch uh, from this vertical post here, but on this side it ends about an inch and a quarter from this vertical post. And it means that detailing the way this ends is going to be different on one side than the other. And I can't, I can't, I can't have that. So I have to cut this out, that extra three quarters of an inch to an inch. Worse yet, I have to recut this side of the door to match this side an inch further over. I, it seems like a hell of a lot of work to solve a tiny problem. But I started this by telling you what it's like to be me. Ah. Okay, so this is gonna get cut right about there. All right, I wasn't planning to do this just yet, but uh, as I'll be able to describe when I get further down here, to go. I can see there's a nice big hole right here so I could take it into a couple of pieces. It would make life a little simpler. There we go. That had to be some of the least savage destruction I've ever done. So let's finish up this cut. I think I'll leave for another day. So this uh, bullnose on the end is going to go right here, but not like that. I'm going to trim it so that it actually goes over this piece of trim just a little bit. I love when pieces of wood sort of intersect like that. So I just want to mark this off. But to there somewhere. Yep. Okay, so let's just start with this. Now my good friend the shipwright insisted 
it's about time I had a chop saw. Well, it's funny, this is, well, well, I had about eight chop saws when I was building houses, mostly the big 12 inch DeWalt's. But I had uh, this very little Makita uh, for my lead trim carpenter. Anyway, so it's pretty opportune that I get to use it right now. We'll see how that looks. And I'll cut its mate so that uh, we can trowel fit them in place. Okay. Okay, so we take the first piece and we set it in place where it's going to go. And then I pick up the next, what I call companion piece, and slide it into place. And I can see I am need a hair more off of the, uh, the first piece here. Perfect. One nice thing about a chop saw, it's much easier to take a hair off or a kerf off, as you might say. We all remember the disastrous kerf and a half. <sighs> Okay, let's 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 see how this looks. Bring up the companion piece. And that will do for me. Very nice. So the way I do this, um, because I want to wrap this around the next corner, I'm gonna fasten this one on now, and then this will be the primary primary piece, and then there'll be a companion piece going around the corner. So we need to get some counterboring going on. Maybe three from each end. Yeah, somewhere there. This is going to be nice. All right, so and to align the next one, let me get it in place here as best I can. I make a little test block because I'm not going to carry on into the aft cabin now. Uh, but I know it is going to run in and become part of the light band in here eventually. So I just made a little test block. And I can see that by the time I start here again, this piece is perfect, so we can install it. And because I want this to stay nicely mated for a long, long time, we'll glue it. Nice. Perfect. And because I don't want this edge loose between now and when I may get to finishing it off, I'm just gonna put the uh, um, companion block on it temporarily and of course it won't get glue because it's coming back off again in a couple of weeks okay let's go to the other side well this breaks my heart i was about to mark for the little notch here and like many times before i've discovered that this boat has some inconsistencies which i should have checked before before i designed this anyway i can't really fix this i can't move this out because it has to be flush it's just gonna have to be one of the little peculiarities of the boat and when all of you come aboard you can come and say that oh yeah that didn't work did it <laughs> okay so you may remember there's going to be a band here so i need something to support the lower side of that same band and I want this to be quite structural. On this side, on the starboard side of the boat, it doesn't matter so much, but on the port side, over the galley, this may support a shelf sticking up from here, skewed into the bottom. There may also be some, but anyway, that's way too much information for right now. But anyway, this is gonna be four inches, four inches, four inches, four inches, four inches. trim various pieces of trim around uh, but uh, that'll hold it happily until then okay then well we have a mess here to deal with um gosh mm, oh, this has been cut apart so badly and so well savagely uh, I really only need about this much clearance I don't know why this hole is so high um, I'm finding things falling through holes. Um, okay, that was a very strange experience. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do my old splice trick. I'm just gonna extend this down to about here. 
when I'm working the aft cabin, I'll add some more structure to the back of the pieces I put on here, and this will resemble something solid. But in the meantime, all I can do is try. What I'm gonna do up here, I'm not quite sure yet. Okay, I've salvaged a little more V-joint from the scrap pile. Look at these nice little repairs. This was out of the forecastle uh, filler in these holes that scooped through and <laughs> so there's already been a lot of filling holes done on this boat. Sometimes is the case the GoPro let me down and you didn't get to watch most of that but uh, I'm very very pleased about it it was fun zipping these off with a uh, fine tool after anyway let's get some mahogany on here and make it look pretty actually to be fair it's now after five o'clock so I won't be running the table saw we'll pick it up tomorrow all right then let's see how this fits As you can see, I've been struggling with lighting while the overheads were wet, but I think they're dry enough now that I can use this lovely big ring here uh, to reattach the lighting up here. Now this last piece is a bit of a trial in more ways than one. Um, the first thing you'll notice is it's not a very close match to the grain. It's getting very, very difficult. Um, at least from my supplier, to get consistent plywood now. He's low in inventory and it's all been picked over. So it's getting a little, a little more difficult to get consistent wood. Also, this, this is on angle and it's bowed. So getting it to be a perfect match is a bit fussy. Now the truth is, when the, it's finished, you'll never see this seam because it'll be behind the cabinet and hopefully behind a tile backsplash here. There we go. There we go. Well, it'll have to do. All right, with that dealt with, I have to start thinking about what I'm going to do here. And it's a bit complex because I think I've told you there'll be a band here with a bead below it. But how does that transition up around the corner and into the aft cabin? Um, I don't want a bulkhead in here. In other words, I don't want it hanging down. Um, but I do need to transition that somewhere here. So I, what I think I'm going to do is actually build a little bracket in here. And that little bracket will, well, for starters, it'll be structural, which will help. Um, because this is kind of a funny uh, structural connection here. And it'll also transition from just a thin um, edge here down to where I have the band. Anyway, it'll also cap the, anyway, have a few things to figure out before uh, it makes any sense. But I'm going to start with uh, just mocking up a quick bracket and we'll see how it could work in there. Okay, I've drawn a rough shape onto here um, that I'm looking for and I'm going to try this thing out again. I have not had much joy with this at all. <laughs> Ah! Can't get it to go around corners, and if I try, and it's the ch I, anyway. Where's my jigsaw? Close enough for me. Well, that'll definitely do for now. Anyway, let me take it inside and explain what I've got in mind. Okay, so this solves a bunch of problems I'm having. But anyway, let me show you what it's going to do. It's going to basically sit here, uh, but set in, of course, so I have to make a notch in here. But to be structural, I can't just cut a notch in the bulkhead or the bracket isn't actually doing anything. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to take out a, uh, a data out of here. Uh, so that it can fit over the bulkhead and I can uh, then screw into it. Uh, in fact, I may actually take the data all the way out to here. 
uh, so that it's actually a structural bracket. And then I'm gonna put a little rabbit in the end for the plywood, the thin veneer plywood that is making up this band and ease this edge a bit. So it'll feel like it's a continuous band of mahogany that turns into a bracket. Now, this does a couple of other things for me um, other than all wrapping this all up. This bulkhead, uh, not bulkhead, this, we'll call it a shelf, is perforated with tons and tons of holes all over it. Uh, so I'm gonna need to build a shallow bulkhead on the inside to cover that up and to run some little puck pot lights in. So on the other side of this bracket over here, I'll be able to drop a small little bulkhead in here that I can put some little puck lights in. So on the whole, this solves a bunch of problems. So here we go, we'll start three quarters of an inch deep this far in here. All right, and so now to get the clearance and the position I need, I have to take an addition, a little corner, quarter inch uh, chunk out of the bulkhead here. And so we'll just make a little notch with the fine tool. Okay. And that fits exactly. Perfect, 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 perfect. Um, I like this, I like this. Well, I think this now has uh, proven its proof of concept and now I can tidy it up a little bit. Now, the reason for the uh, plum cut here uh, is that I'll wrap the band around and it'll have a little nub here, in fact, uh, just to wrap and to end the whole band there. I think, I think that'll look great. I think that'll look fantastic, actually. All right then, just a little bit of easing. And uh, I think, let's see now. Oh yeah, that is looking pretty nice. I like that. I like it. I like it. And here we have the lower bead ready to go around the corner. Oop, I see I'm going to have to cut a little more out of uh, the bulkhead here for that to fit. Very happy with that. In fact, this is all going to get cut in a little bit further anyway for the door frame to fit on there later. Anyway, I like the look of that. Now this piece will just return all the way around the bottom of the uh, bracket here. Love it. All right, now we just got to ease some edges on this. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> a little, Peter, just a little.
here we go with the other band. It'll sit right there and there. Very good. Bring that up. All right now, so the lower bead over on this side uh, becomes a shelf. And you can bet I would love to put that in now and figure out how it's going to meet down there by the door and a bunch of other things. But you know, I'm not going to because I think I'm going to have to do so much work in this wheelhouse before I actually need this shelf that it's just going to get in, into trouble and I'll, I'll break it off. I'm pretty sure about it. So anyway, I'm going to call it here uh, for now. I'll figure out how to deal with all that when I put the door posts in and I can't do that until I start to work in the aft cabinet and work on the other side of these bulkheads. I did have to trim off a little bit of this nasty uh, veneer here to make sure I could get that piece on. But the proof of concept is done. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, you know, you have this nice swoopy, swoopy, swoopy. Very good. I just love it. Um, this, of course, is a dry fit because I'm going to have to take it off to cut the other side of this arch. And it's a good thing because it's out of alignment here now. Anyway, so that'll all get fixed up. And uh, I'm, I just, I, I, I can't imagine actually uh, this turning out better. Okay, well, this has been a really great week with one major <clears throat> exception. I've had a wicked cold all week. You probably noticed. I'm hoping you haven't watched too much stuff dribble out of my nose. Um, super happy with the overheads. Uh, that petite um, Easy Poxy paint makes anyone, um, <laughs> even a very mediocre painter like me, uh, turn out pretty well. Um, the ceilings down there look good. The, the, um, the stringer cover, really, really happy about that. I am going to put a little piece of trim on there, but we'll get to that next time. The main thing is, next time we're here together, I'll be building the dinette benches. And the huge advantage to that is, as soon as they're built, I can start living in this cabin and not that cabin, which is, well, it's just troublesome. Well, hello and welcome to the Travels with Jordy um, Ginger Lemon Tea of the Week. Well, I suppose it was inevitable I finally got COVID. A hair I thought I was immortal. Anyway, um, I'm sure it's going to be just fine. It came on as a pretty heavy uh, head cold over the week up in the boat shed and I by the time I was trying to drive home yesterday I was in a mess. Anyway, uh, fantastic uh, uh, lemon honey ginger tea uh, kindly made and brought for me by Lady Zephyrus. So <laughs> cheers. Mm. All right, let's get to the paperwork. I can go back to bed. Last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t-shirt is Tony Hill. Tony Hill, congratulations and get a hold of me. I'll make sure you get your shirt. Okay, um, there's been a couple of beautiful gifts come through the Amazon wish list. This is a set of uh, six inch um, backer pads for my big powerful sander. Uh, these are very, very important because um, that sander, uh, along with Abernet sanding discs, makes it about 99% dust free, which is in incredible really. So this is gonna be very useful this summer as I do serious uh, fiberglass sanding to the top of the boat. So thank you ever so much. Um, Douglas Young, cheers, who I understand is here in Victoria. Uh, cheers and thank you very much, Douglas. Mm. Those will be very handy. And uh, from Brian Costello, uh, very timely I can say, is a spool of uh, DC wire uh, for the boat for Jordy and um, I'm sort of behind the scenes finishing the wiring on the boat. There's a lot to do actually. <laughs> anyway, uh, but it's not very interesting. I will give you a summary of how it all came together when I'm done. Uh, but thank you ever so much, Brian. Uh, that is very uh, handy because I'm going through a lot of wire. Um, cheers to you, Brian. Incidentally, another spool. You, you, you might think I'm picking up the same one, but there's two. Um, arrived uh, with no indication of who sent it, um, and but it was a separate order, so I imagine there's another fine person out there that was kind enough to send me some more wire. Please let me know who you are so I could thank you properly. Cheers. I have to send out a huge uh, appreciation to Tim Vukman. Um, Vukman, as it is uh, come to me to be understood. Oh my gosh, I'm losing it. Um, it's how it's pronounced properly. Tim kindly let me know that. Uh, Vukman. 
oh my gosh, I'm saying his name over and over again. Um, Tim was an awfully good sport about the um, um, savageness of last week's beer of the week, and um, I'm I'm very grateful for his good nature, and uh, he's an excellent example of the community. Uh, cheers to you, Tim. Oh, this is good. Okay, all we need now <laughs> is a word of the week, and the word of the week is inevitable. <laughs> because uh, it was inevitable that I finally would get COVID in 2023. Oh my gosh. Okay. See you next week. This is hardware store gel stain. Yes. No, this shit is great.